Which, which we call it a bent pyramid. The reason why they call it like this because for a long time the people believed that the king miscalculates the angle. <laughs> okay, but we don't believe in this. The people here yeah. such a great building like this will not make this simple mistake. Even let's let's think that the king made a mistake. He will care about if there is something wrong here in calculating the angle. He will care about making this outer casing perfectly like this. Definitely no. This means that the king naturally just walk casing. towards it. Yes, and especially when we go also to the other side, you will find a wonderful casing. Okay, this means that the king who built this one he meant to make it like this. It's like a huge baslava and covered with a pyramidian shape. Let's see. If you have a pen, you or let's make it like Yeah, this. I don't think they're making a, a several hundred like year mistake. <laughs> like this and then covered with a pyramidian shape. Okay, if there is something wrong here, where is actually the room supposed to be? Do you know where is the room supposed to be? It's exactly under this pyramidian shape. Here exactly. It's not under here, it's not here, it's not under here. It's exactly here under this pyramidian shape. This means that the one who built this one meant to make the angle like this. You can consider it like a mediator between the space pyramid and the Poseidon one. But in general, this is a design like this. Okay. Why did they want to do that? We know that they are to produce energy. So when they built this, they always have in mind to try to create or to take the benefit of the energy coming from the rocks, coming from the stone. With this angle like this, in physics, but here with this angle, you can direct this energy to other sides. Maybe this is the reason why they changed this angle like this. Okay, okay, there is something wrong on the other side. Here we walk. Yes. Yeah, so maybe the changing of the geometry is changing the flow of the energy that is created by all this this rock and the resonance of the rock, right? It's, what kind of rock is it? It's limestone. So it's a lot of silica. And silica is a good resonator and conductor. I want to show you again. Look at this outer casing. Okay, my friends, can you see here the outer casing here? Very smooth. Very smooth. But can you see a little water like this? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, what about this water? Actually, this is moisture, but this is not from outside. Actually, this is from inside because of the energy, this amount of energy coming from the building, from this pyramid. This energy will get rid of this moisture year by year, day by day. Firstly, I ask it, okay, how about maybe in the early morning, something like this? That's it. When I ask it for Christmas, One outside, just the energy, okay, created here from the It's quite awesome to be in Egypt. This is my uh, second time here, but uh, we just completed the Resonance Academy delegate gathering with people from 18 countries around the world. Um, we're on a special excursion with. Honey, our guide, one of our amazing guides uh, that was with us the whole time. And uh, this is the Ben Pyramid, Darshur. Uh, really nice day, it's not too hot, and we get to see this incredible pyramid. Uh, it's kind of funny to me that they would make up a story like, yeah, the Pharaoh or whoever that built this, because we're not even totally sure who built it, made a mistake, right? <laughs> And spent you know unbelievable amount of time and energy building this thing, and then said, "Oops, we got to change the angle." <laughs> Check this out. I don't think so. I don't think so, as they say. Look at those casing stones. 
super smooth and flat. The Great Pyramid and the other two pyramids on the Giza Plateau that most people are familiar with, most of the casing stones, almost all of them, have been taken off. And they were basically mined by the people of the area, and they built a lot of uh, 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 mosques and other sacred structures around Cairo with those casing stones because they're really smooth, really good material. A lot of times in Egypt, people have reused stuff that people have cut in earlier times. And what we learned here this past week is that it's very likely that a lot of the stuff that is in Egypt that's attributed to the pharaohs and to the, uh, the newer kingdoms and the newer dynasties may have been pre-dynastic. And when they say pre-dynastic, that means anything before the dynasties. And so some people start saying that some of these things could be tens of thousands of years old. And of course, that's outside of what the mainstream says. It's somewhat controversial, but I can tell you from experience, we've seen a lot of evidence that points to the fact that this thing was not made with slaves and vine ropes. Um, this pyramid, I'm not as sure about as the Great Pyramid, but the Great Pyramid for as, as a prime example. Um, you're not just pulling these rocks with vine ropes and with people on, you know, rolling on logs and things like this. You know, first of all, there's no forest for the bazillion rocks you would need. And uh, your vine ropes would break because some of the rocks for the king's chamber lining and the ceiling are something like a hundred tons. It's my friend Hugh Newman and uh, he's a megalithic researcher. He's got an organization called Megalithomania. Hey, Hugh, uh, what's your impression right now of seeing this yeah, again? This is pretty outrageous, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, as, as uh, Honey was saying, this is like clearly pre This yeah. is mega, megalithic. Exactly. It's serious. And it's, they don't make mistakes when they build these. This yeah. is not a mistake with the uh, different angles. The specific, it's probably encoding geometries and different angles for a reason to like potentially energetic purposes but also because they're working with natural and specific geometries in their design and so there's been some research done on that that the angles are definitely you know defining uh, different aspects of geometry right okay, okay and as we know from giza from saqqara from everywhere we find the pyramid that there is like a unit there is like a compound Okay, the pyramid was not built alone. There was a building here, a temple. And there is like a causeway. Look at the causeway. Actually, Muhammad taught me is to look under your feet, not to step as a prop. But when you look under your feet here, what you can see, the causeway. this the bent pyramid is that the only name for this or is there an ancient name uh, sometimes the people call it uh, the Mid pyramid okay and this is the evidence that the egyptians controlled the gravity oh that's so it? cool yeah Super. it's so above the, above floating above the hand. hand yeah it's hard to see on the video but which a uh, hieroglyph showing something floating above somebody's hand. And we've seen 
many hieroglyphs that are very mysterious, let's just say. Because the people for a long time believed that how they built the pyramid like this were in pyramid by making a ramp made out from silk. And they, they got this idea from the pylon in the Karnak temple, first pylon, which was left unfinished. It worked with the pylon because the blocks were very small, but this way didn't work here because look how heavy and how big are the blocks. So if you would put this amount of blocks on, or blocks, on a ramp made out from silk, silk would smash. So definitely the ancient Egyptians had an amazing technique to raise this one up and to measure the angle. And look from this side also, you can see the short edge here. And this is a clear evidence that there is no mistake here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're not making a mistake when you're being this precise. I mean, realistically, we would have a very difficult time recreating this pyramid, even with the cranes that we have that run on diesel fuel and our technology we have today. We saw a crane at Luxor that could lift five tons right next to the base of the crane, but by the time you're out at the arm of the crane at the end, it was only lifting 720 tons or sorry, 720 kilograms. And this thing is laser sharp. Look at that edge. Here I'm gonna walk to where the edge of the pyramid would come down to the ground. We can look and see how straight and uh, flat that edge is. This is something Nassim Haramein was telling me to do when I got here, so here you go, Nassim. Look at that. Whew! That is straight. <laughs> oh my God. Look at that precision. That's not some guy holding his thumb in the air and being like, okay, a little to the left, a little to the right. Sorry for the shakiness, guys, and the uh, wind. <laughs> I'm doing the best I can with cellular signal in the middle of the desert on the Giza Plateau. But uh, yeah, I wanted to show you all this. And I love seeing all your comments on this Facebook Live. It's awesome. Uh, I like to hear where you guys are coming in from, so please let us know because it's great to connect around the world with folks while we're in places like this. It's time to re-educate because when I was a little kid I was really into the pyramids and I got the whole story about the slaves and the vine ropes and you know if you're a physicist and you start adding up the data for example, on the Great Pyramid, it's 2,330,000 stones. And they say it was built by Khufu, and he was a pharaoh, right? And, and in those days, you didn't live much longer than age 45 or 50. So you might only have 20 years to build your pyramid. So let's say, they say the Great Pyramid maybe was built in 20 years, but if you do the math on that, 2,330,000 stones, for 20 years working every daylight hour 365 days a year then you're laying you're cutting moving placing and perfectly aligning stones every few minutes and that just doesn't add up the physics of that doesn't add up look how small Hugh is now <laughs> next to this thing and how perfect all those casing stones are what I'm saying is that just like in physics there's been some kind of orthodoxy that's been cemented into the lore of the study of ontology or in physics, and it kind of just been passed along and it just becomes accepted. But insightful researchers like Nassim Harman in physics and Egyptologists and researchers like Graham Hancock and others have been taking a very you know detailed look at these structures and finding that there's many subtle differences between the standard model, if you will, and what we observe on the ground, the data of it. And if you start doing the calculations, it doesn't add up. So we have to be careful about just accepting the stories uh, and kind of having critical thinking towards these structures. It's my first time at this uh, Bent Pyramid, and uh, it's actually, in some ways more impressive than the Great Pyramid because the Great Pyramid does not have its casing stones except for just a few at the very bottom. And here's Hugh filming. Definitely check out Hugh's uh, organization Megalithomania and he's got a great YouTube channel with 
550 videos from around the world. But uh, look at these casing stones. I'm going to just go right up in so you can see how precise the placement of these are. So you've got to cut the angle perfectly. You've got to place them together perfectly. Look at how, look how precise that seam is. All of them. Just perfect. What do you think, Hugh? Oh, it's, just, it's just too good, isn't it? It's, it's too just, good. It's so neat and tidy. Yeah. It's like precision. There's even evidence of like always and tenon joints here, which is what we find uh, Stonehenge, we find it in some of our pyramids. Uh, yeah, just, there's no mistakes. They didn't make a mistake with either. That's, that's, one, of the, that's one of the things they keep trying to tell us. Yeah. kind of control device and you're able to levitate the stones the time it would take it's just yeah yeah just to levitate stones and, and lay them the mountain, it's like 